Good morning, this is Bill, and along with my partner Judy, and we have been doing a lot of reading to the children at different schools and uh, different activities like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. And Judy and I have been missing that since we're confined to our home, so I decided to film one, and maybe we could get it out and let people uh, at least hear some stories, and maybe I could uh, hear back from you and uh, get some feedback as to if you enjoyed it or not. Anyway, I'm going to read a book by, with, uh, that I got from Canines for Christ that we're members of, and I'm going to introduce the two characters. I've got st uh, things here showing you who they are. This is a story about best friends. There are two dogs, Zeke and Jimmy, and a calico cat named Cody, and I don't have a, a, a one of the calico cat, but anyway, there's a cat that lives in the house. They live in a huge house way out in the country at the end of a long dirt road. Some people would call a place where they live a farm, though they don't grow anything but hay. There are some horses and an old windmill and a horse barn. It's not the uh, steel shed type kind of, uh, kind of barn, mind you. It's a real old fashioned barn, uh, honest to goodness, red barn with two big slots and a silos and a hayloft upstairs full of hay. These two dogs, Zeke, and Jimmy have many human traits, although they look like dogs, and they think and act like a lot like people. In fact, they think they are people. Zeke and Jimmy and Cody, the cat, live with the Peterson family. Tom and his wife, Sally, and their son, Joey. Zeke is a peaceful, long-haired Pekingese. He'd rather sleep and uh, leap and eat and run around and cause trouble. In fact, he rarely gets into trouble unless Jimmy stirs things up. Jimmy is a park terrier, and you know for, uh, terriers are known for getting into a lot of trouble. In fact, Jimmy's middle name is Trouble with a capital T. They like to run as far as, uh, from home as possible. They like to ch uh, chase things that move and sometimes even their own tails. And they're uh, especially good at digging up the yard. Zeke is an older, wiser dog. His main job is to try and keep Jimmy out of trouble, which is not so easy. And this is where our story begins, with as much trouble that, that only God could, uh, could handle. These dogs, with so much trouble that only God could bail these dogs out. And I'd like to start with a prayer, if you don't mind. If you'll bow your head, I'd like to pray a prayer and help us get started. Dear Jesus, as we study the Bible today, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be our guide. We ask that you will help us to understand and feel your great love for us. We invite you to teach us as we study more about you through your word, the Bible. Amen. This tale uh, I'm going to read today, there's several stories in this book, and the one I'm going to read today is a tale told by Jimmy, and I'm going to read it, and hopefully we can get some, uh, let God will speak to us through this story. The house smells delicious today, chicken, ham, turkey, pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. Only once they called me a little pumpkin eater, and it wasn't a compliment that I but I'll save that tale for another day. Today we're giving, going to have a party because it's Easter. You know, Easter's coming up this Sunday, and so I thought this would be a good story to read. When most people think of Easter, they think of Easter Bunny, jelly beans, chocolate eggs, but it's strange to me, we live on a farm with lots of rabbits. None of them could be called an Easter uh, rabbit. None of them give, uh, give us chocolate eggs or jelly beans or anything but trouble as far as I can uh, am concerned. So I asked Zeke, Easter, it's not really about these bunnies and baskets, is it? No, Zeke said. The real Easter story is much different. It's an amazing story of how Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and came back to life. The Bible says some of his friends went out to his grave and found it empty. They even went inside inside a tomb yeah that's a deep dark hole where the uh, where they place dead bodies 
they, that sounds creepy, I said. I must have made a creepy sound. How? Two, because all of a sudden, Cody appeared. He lay down beside, uh, nearby to listen. Remember, Cody is the cat. Let us back up and tell you about the whole story, Zeke said as I snuggled close. They might, the, the night before Jesus died, he laid his, had his last meal with his friends. Now we call it the Last Supper. He gave them bread and they ate together. Jesus also told them that he would uh, die for their sins. Oh no, I said. You, yes, and for our sins too, Zeke uh, continued. They put nails through his hands and feet and even spit on him. Ooh, I yelped and spun in a circle and how Jesus told him he would die on the cross. Zeke said, but crosses were usually just for criminals. Then he said he would raise from, rise from the dead. Do you know it happened just like he said it would? Jesus rose from the dead? I asked with surprise. I didn't think people could do that. Not an ordinary man, Zeke explained, but Jesus wasn't an ordinary. Jesus was God in man's body. Wow, God in man's body? I echo. The Bible tells all about it, Zeke. They were, they even made him carry a cross. It was on Friday when Jesus died. Darkness came over the whole land and the curtain in the temple was torn into two. It was eerie. I'm glad I wasn't there. It, would have made me sad to see it. Me too, I added. If I were had been there, I would would have bit them all. Then, uh, then they said they laid him in a tomb. See, uh, continue. There were a huge stone called uh, rolled in front of it. It must have taken several guards to put that in place. It was so heavy. On Sunday morning. The third day after Jesus died, some women from the from uh, went to the tomb. They were Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and Joanna. And this comes from the Bible, Luke 24, verse 10. What they found shocked and scared them. The stone had been rolled away. The tomb was wide open. I looked at Zeke. Creepy. That would have been, made my hair stand on end. Yeah, mine too, Zeke said. Then they did the unthinkable. They went inside. Can you imagine going inside someone's tomb? I sure wouldn't. Me neither, I said. Now I really shivered and shook. But there, that is how they found out that Jesus had arose from the dead. Zeke explained. They bent down, stared into the dark tomb, and they didn't find anything inside but the burial clothes that Jesus had been wrapped in after he he died. His body was not there. Well, where did it go? Did they hide it? That's super creepy. A body couldn't go out uh, away by itself. It must have uh, felt awful, I said. Zeke nodded and confirmed, I would. But then suddenly the woman saw two angels. Yes, real live angels that gleamed like lightning. This comes from Luke 24.4 that tells about it. I would have, I would have fainted. But that, there they were, huge, beautiful, tall, inside the tomb. They stood right by the spot where Jesus' body had been. been. Imagine how scared the women must have been. They asked the angels, what happened to the body? It was placed here on Friday. Now it's Sunday morning. It has been, it's missing. How could that be? I gave Zeke my, mind, uh, my most serious look and asked. Remember what we should do when we weren't, aren't sure about something. We, sh yes, we see what God's word says, right? Right, Zeke agreed. The Bible says in Luke 24, 5 through 8, angels said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he had told you while he was, uh, was still with you in Galilee. On the third day, he would be raised again. Then they remembered Jesus' word from the Luke 24, 5 through 8. At, that, at first, the women thought they were dreaming. What an awesome dream. 
Could it be true? Did Jesus really come back from the dead as, he's, uh, had, as he had promised? Dogs can't. Cats can't. Seek, look at Cody and con uh, confirm. If Jesus did, what, uh, where was he? What was he wore us? Uh, what was he uh, wearing uh, since his burial clothes were still in the tomb? The cloth that was wrapped around his head was lying there neatly fo uh, folded. Imagine that. The dead man was gone, but his burial clothes were still there. Scary. Zeke told him, help, took a deep breath and went on. He heard Sally say, he was nailed to a cross. He sh uh, showed them nail marks in his hands and feet. They knew it was really Jesus. One disciple, Thomas, didn't believe that he was risen and said, I must put my fingers inside the nails where the nails were. I must put my hand inside his side. Only then will I believe. And that comes from John 20, verse 25. That sounds kind of mean, I said. I think he was just a hard, I think he was just having a hard time being sure, as he continued. So the next week, Thomas was in the room with his friends, and Jesus appeared again. The door was locked, but somehow Jesus came in and, uh, and stood right in front of them. Then he told Thomas, put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach into your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And that comes from John 20, verse 27. That would, make me, that would take my breath away, I said. Yeah, if Jesus had only appeared to one or two people, no one would have believed it. They would have thought someone was playing a trick on them. They, they maybe they had hidden his body somewhere, but he appeared to a lot of people so that we know he really did uh, rise just as he said he would. I didn't know that anything like river came back to life, I said. How did it do it? His father's power did it because they were there was nothing bad in Jesus. I couldn't explain it all, Zeke said. Cody had drawn a closer, uh, Cody had drawn closer to, to us, but he didn't say a word. Zeke asked, and Jesus wasn't a ghost either because he, uh, he, he ate food and talked with them. Later, they saw him again uh, as he went into heaven into the clouds. When he left them, he said he was going to prepare a place for us, but that's a story for another day. I'm glad to know that the pesky rabbits didn't have anything to do with the real Easter story. It would be wonderful if a dog or a person or even a cat we knew came back alive. Wow, that really would be a, t a time for a great celebration. That's probably why the whole uh, Peterson family household has such a great big party on Easter. They relived the time when Jesus came out of the grave and came back to life. He had then dead, but now he was alive forever. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. It says, what is the Easter story about? I'm going to ask a question and try to answer them as I ask them. Easter story is about, is it about Easter bunnies or Jesus being born or Jesus dying and then rising again? Well, of course, it was uh, with Jesus dying and being born, uh, risen again. Number two question I'm going to ask, Jesus died and was buried. When, uh, when did he uh, rise from the uh, dead immediately? Was, uh, when did he rise from the dead? Was it immediately or on the third day? Well, of course, it was on the third day. Number three question, who, was in the, uh, who went to the tomb first and uh, discovered that Jesus was missing? Was it the apostles or Mary Magdalene with friends or was it Josie? Well, it was Mary Magdalene and her friends. Whom did the women see when they entered the tomb? Okay, there's two uh, some questions. When did, uh, who did they see when they entered the tomb? Was it angels or Jesus? Well, they saw uh, the angels first and the angels told them that Jesus was risen. Number five, what else was in the tomb? What else was in the tomb? Was it a stone, or Jesus' clothes, or any, or nothing? Well, of course, it was Jesus' burial clothes was in the tomb. Number six, the angel said to the women, 
Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is plain. He is what? He is risen. Number seven, the last question. What does risen mean? What does risen mean to you? It means that he was dead and he came back to life. Well, I'm going to end this today and hopefully it works out okay on it, but that we can see it and maybe I can do this again someday. And we'll talk to you later. And again, Judy, Zeke, and Jimmy would like to say, uh, uh, have a very good Easter. Okay, thank you.